Hello everyone, I'm Marina and it's a Cromel School. I know how much you like the videos where I do my own nails. This time my task is more difficult. I will do crystal French tips. Let's get into it. My nails are about a month old. Recently I've taught a nail extension course and had to wear gloves all day long. So some of the nails have broken. There are cracks. I need to remove them completely. I always wear gloves, even when working with my own nails, to protect my skin from all the dust and so as not to accidentally ruin the manicure on my right hand with the drill bit. I like this length and like colors. They go well with everything. So today I will do something of the kind. I quickly remove the length with a clipper. And now I need to remove most of the coating, up to a thin underlay and then finish it up with a file. There are peelings in some areas. Actually, the coating doesn't hold well on my nails. It always peels off. So I regularly try various materials, testing them on myself. And if they hold well on me, then they will hold well on all the nail types. I completely remove the free edge, since I want to make it clear. So I can't leave it as it is and do a correction, since I need it to be crystal clear. I remove the free edge, especially in the gross points. There should be none of it, otherwise the form will automatically go up or down, and there may be gaps between the nail and the form. I can't let it happen. I polish the surface with a soft file, removing all the leftover coating, up to the natural nail lifting up its scales. I proceed with the manicure. I open up the cuticle pocket with an orange stick. I'm using such a plastic one. I'm testing it. Well, I can't say that it's better than the wooden one. They are also disposable, so if any of you have tried them, write in the comments if you like them or not. I will lift up the cuticle with a diamond lentil drill bit. 0.25 in diameter. It's so easy to use due to its width. It perfectly polishes the proximal nail fold and opens up the cuticle pocket well. But it can also drill through the nail plate, since it's very wide. It can easily cut the surface. I polish the cuticle and the hangnails. There is almost no cuticle on my index nail, but lots of pterygium. So I process it, pulling the lateral folds well, so as not to cut the nail. I don't have a particular set of drill bits that I use on my own nails. So I may use flame, lentil or any other drill bits. I guess it depends on my mood in the moment. There is some cuticle left on these nails, so I will cut it off with scissors, making a single cut. It may seem that there is no cuticle, but once we start cutting it, there is actually a lot. I've done a manicure and now I prepare the nails for the coating. I carefully remove all the dust. I will sculpt the nails using forms, so I prepare them. I remove the middle part, curl the form and set it up, under the nail plate. Make sure that there are no gaps in the gross points. The form fits nicely on the index nail, so I make cuts right away, to open up the lateral folds. I do a control check, to make sure that it fits. I need to set it up straight on the index nail. Other nails are up growing. So I chilled the form down a bit. To build up a correct architecture and make the nails even. If we don't cut out the form and set it up, then it will automatically go up. So I need to cut it out not in a central part, but on the sides. I cut it out to make it flatter, since this way the form will be tilted down as I need. 
there are big lateral folds on the middle nail. So I also need to cut out the ears. This way the form will get pressed well under the finger and the nail will get beautifully arched and not too wide. I make sure that it fits in the gross points. If you sculpt your own nails, I recommend you prepare all 5 forms right away. Or even 10, if you work with both hands. Since once you set them up on some nails, it will be harder to cut out the forms. I have prepared all the forms and placed them in the correct order so as not to mix them up. Now I apply an acid-free primer all over the nail plate for a good bonding. And an acid-free base coat. It's a gel polish base coat. I apply a thin layer and sand it to cure in the lamp for 30 seconds. I work with two nails at a time, so that there are no licks, since if the base coat licks, so will the gel coating. And there will be liftings. I have cured the base coat and now I proceed with the form setup. I remove the substrate and stick the lower ears and the front ones. I press the form into a sharp needle shape and set it up under the nail. The central axis on the form should follow the central axis of the finger. I stick the lower ears. There should be such a triangle from the top view. And as you can see, the lateral folds don't open up the form. I will build up the underlay using a clear gel. It should be crystal clear and not to get yellow after polymerization. I form a thin underlay, laying out an almond shape. I form the lower parallels correctly right away, a straight line and a smooth lift from the side view. I always lay it out carefully, without applying too much material, so as not to file a lot later. And by the way, the better you lay it out now, the less time you will spend on filing later. I press the form a bit more before curing and sand it to cure for 30 seconds. The middle nail grows a bit sideways. The last phalange is curved, but I guide by the central axis, so the form is turned to the right. While laying out the gel, make sure not to blend it too much with the brush, since otherwise there will be tiny bubbles, which will be noticeable later. I compare the length with the compass. It should be the same on three nails, index, middle and ring ones, a bit shorter on the pinky nail and longer on the thumb. Once all the underlays are cured, it's time to form the nail beds. I'm using a soft pink acrogel for this. It's really pretty and I love it. It also matches my natural nail plate color. So the nail growth won't be that noticeable. I pull the material down and then using the flat side of the brush, I push it like this, forming an even smile line. This step is difficult, so it takes practice, but I'm sure that you will handle it with time. Acrogel is perfect for this purpose. It does not flow as gel and we can lay out the nail bed evenly without filing it later. Since I'm shaping almonds, the nail bed needs to be more elongated than in a square shape. I compare the nail beds. They should be of the same length. I carefully press the material without getting too close to the cuticle, since I want to add a simple nail design there. I sand the nails to cure for one minute. Done with the nail beds, now I proceed with the design. I will need various glitter particles and yuki flakes. And to fix them, 
I cover up the nail plate with a clear gel in the cuticle zone. On four nails at once. The most dazzling part of this manicure is laying out the glitter. I place bigger fragments in the center, not on the sides. And then I add some Yuki flakes. They are thin, so we can place them close to the cuticle or on the sides. I press them well to make sure that they don't pop. And sand to cure for 30 seconds. Now I need to build up the correct architecture. And form the apex. Using some translucent pink gel. I cover up the glitter in the cuticle zone. I pull the gel toward the free edge. And sand secure. Make sure to check from the side view if the architecture is correct. And don't apply too much material, since the tags often apply big drops and the nails get too bulky. Our task is to build up the nails in the cuticle zone only. I cure the nails for 30 seconds in between. I really like how shimmery and shiny this glitter is. Not on its own without this milky layer, but with this soft muted effect. I wipe off the tacky layer and proceed with filing. Here make sure to make only long moves with the file, since otherwise the smile line will get grained. And not that even. And to check if the smile line is even, we need to mat the surface well. Once we can see that the smile line border is matte, there are no glossy areas, that means that we've laid it out correctly and filed evenly. I decrease the surface and proceed with laying out the clear gel. I put a big gel drop and very carefully start spreading it, starting off from the left through the center and to the right. During this step, it's very important not to form any bubbles inside of this layer. So lay it out carefully. I pull the gel for its top. Without getting too deep with the brush, we can compare it to milk. When we heat it up, there is a film on top of it. And we need to pull this film only, without touching the liquid part. I always lean on with my pinky finger to make sure that the brush does not get too deep. After curing the coating for 30 seconds, I separate and take off the form and put on a clip to fix the arch. If you think that clear tips are boring, you can add any design there. Whatever you wish. Starting from glitter, gel polish, gel, aqua gel, any other design, and so on. All to your liking. Cure for two minutes, remove the tacky layer, and proceed with filing. First, I'm using a drill bit to file all the extra gel. It's a green cone drill bit. At the maximal speed, I make long smoothing moves from right to left. And the surface gets smooth. I'll just need to touch it up with the file, smoothing it out a bit more. I touch up the lower parallels in this natural almond shape. There should be a straight line and a smooth lift. And no extreme lifts from the gross point to the free edge. Otherwise, the shape won't look natural. It will be unnaturally sharp. The side walls won't be strengthened. And such nails may easily break in the gross points. Make sure to file near the cuticle to prevent all the possible liftings. 
All the moves should be long. And move in one direction. From left to right. There is not enough gel on the index nail. In this part. There is a glossy area on the surface. So I add some more gel. Cure in a lamp. Touch it up. And now I buff the surface. To remove all the lines from filing from it. I degrease, remove all the dust and apply a top coat. It should not get yellow after curing either. So choose the ones with a UV filter. When we cure them in the lamp, they have a blue or purple shade. Besides, we can cover it up with a top coat from the inside as well, to make the tips even clearer. It's my favorite part. When under the top coat, we can finally see all the beauty of the design and all the efforts. Well, I'm absolutely delighted with this design. It's gorgeous. Do you like it too? Then give a thumbs up and support me. I wish you all success in your work. Good luck. Bye bye. I forgot to say subscribe to the channel, write in the comments, call me. <laughs>